welcome the Harvest Assembly of Family and Friends on YouTube and Facebook as well. I'm so excited today we get to be here in the house of the Lord. How many are excited today? Amen. We are on Resurrection Day. Happy Resurrection Day. Yes. 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 He is risen. He is risen. risen and risen, risen indeed. indeed. Amen. 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 Today my sermon title is Let Us Not Weep. There's a lot to be said about how many have ever wept, cried, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. We've all cried bitter tears. We've cried happy tears. We've cried sad tears. We've cried all kinds of tears in life, right? But the greatest tears you can ever cry is when you're crying to the Father. Amen? Amen? Amen. John chapter 20, starting with verse 15 through 18, it says, Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? She supposed him to be the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around and said to him, Rabbanoi, what is to say, teacher? Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Hallelujah. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that he, she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. I want to focus for a second. I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Think about that for a second. He always said when he came here, he came to do the work of the Father that sent him, right? He never took authority for himself. He always did it for the Father, right? That's right. See, but when he started taking authority is when you hear after his resurrection, then you start hearing more authority coming to him because it says in the Word, all authority in heaven and earth have been given to me, yeah. right? Amen. And so we know that it's yes and amen and complete when it is that. How many are thankful for that? Yeah. It's yay and amen. It's done and over with. The price has been paid. The debt's been settled. Aren't you glad for that? The debt has been settled. Christians are to be joyful though, aren't we? Yes. Oh boy, that's here we go. Yeah. Pastor, you talk. Did you talk about joy two weeks ago? I sure did. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now we're going to go into Nehemiah, chapter 8. Sorry, I had to say that. <laughs> That's how we learned the name, Nehemiah, when I was a kid. <laughs> Who's the shortest guy in the Bible? <laughs> Nehemiah. <laughs> but you got to have a little fun, right? Chapter 8, verses 9 through 10, it says, And Nehemiah was... Uh, who was the governor, Ezra, the priest, and the scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Mm -hmm. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those from, for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy. To our Lord, do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Philippians 4, aren't you glad for that? Yeah. Philippians 4, 4 through 6 says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your glad gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything be by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Amen? Amen? The problem with having joy is that we live in the real world sometimes. <laughs> yeah, we are. How many are not enjoying this last few months, right? There's some things that have been going on. How many has not enjoyed this whole last year? Oh, yeah. Right? It's not been very fun. We've been working. And, and, We've had a pandemic, we've had a presidential change, we've had all kinds of things going on, right, that just kind of threw everything in a turmoil. 
But heaven did not change. Right. No turmoil was ever brought into heaven. No. Man changes, but God doesn't. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Aren't you thankful for that? Yeah. He's steadfast and he's true to his word. He does not change. Now, that doesn't mean he can't change things. When saints begin to pray, things begin to happen. That's right. How many know? Yeah. The Bible yeah. says that. Yeah. So if, this, if, if things begin to change because we get on our knees and beseech the Father, we go to Him, right? Who is our joy found in? In the Lord. Yeah. Who's our rest? The Lord. Who's our peace? The, the Lord. Who is our joy? Always in Him, right? And who is the comforter that's with us all the time? The Holy Spirit. Isn't that a joy to know that you have somebody with you walking through this life, not just not just Jesus in your life, but you also have the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God yeah. in your life. Amen. And the Father's in heaven. Amen. And Jesus is at the right hand, and He's talking it out for you. He's working it out. He said, Daddy, but they're forgiven. Remember that. And then the Holy Spirit's praying the Father's heart back to the Father for your behalf. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Aren't you glad for that? Yep. It's funny how Mary goes and she's like the body's missing. Where did they take my Lord? And then she thinks Jesus is the gardener. Yep. And she said, where did you take my Lord? You just tell me I'll rush him away. You discarded him. Just tell me where he is so I can I can take care of it for you. She was concerned for her Savior. See, they they didn't realize when he said, I will rise on the third day. That that was good. As that's what it was. Everything else he said came to pass, right? But that day they were still mourning and crying because they lost their Savior because they had no direction anymore. They were left on us their own and they were orphans, they felt like. How many has ever felt left alone and like an orphan? Amen. Mm -hmm. Even as a Christian? Yep. You're not. The devil's trying to tell you that. Mm -hmm. He's trying to make you feel alienated and that you're not worth anything and then because you believe it, you receive that. He's always with me. Come on. True. If you believe what Satan tells you, that's your problem because you're believing it. But if you believe what the Word says, the Most High God says about you, you don't have to worry about that. And when Jesus said, Mary, yeah. only one person that ever walked on this earth could say it like he did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mary. Yeah. Think about this. Our mamas were the only ones that could say our name. <laughs> and we knew who they were without <laughs> seeing the word, seeing their face, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Even five acres away. <laughs> Same here. My mom was that way too. But, but, we all know our mama's voice, right? Mm -hmm. How about we always know our daddy's voice, right? Oh, yeah. No. The Christians, believers, sometimes miss out on daddy's voice because a voice sounds similar. We think that that's the voice we need to follow. And we become distracted from the father's voice because the shepherd will always be calling us to righteousness and calling us to him. And when we're doing things that we shouldn't be doing, we get divisive and we start doing things out of the lines of how God operates. True. See, God doesn't operate on the outside. He operates from the inside. See, He didn't come and you put lipstick on a pig, it's still going to be pig, right? So what He has to do, what's, what's He got to do? He's got to start here, right? I love pig, by the way. But... We're going to have some tonight. <laughs> but let me tell you, I'm a changed person because of what Jesus did in here. Amen. It may not matter how much makeup or how ugly I am. I'm sorry you have to look at me every Sunday. But I'll tell you, I'm a new creature and I'm a new creation in Him. And I'm beautiful to Him. And I'm beautiful because of what He's done in me. Something beautiful, Amen. something good, in all my confusion, 
How many has been there? Yeah. He understood. It doesn't matter what I was. He still understood me. He never forsake me. See? Yeah. Listen. He never forsaked us. Thank you, Jesus, for not forsaking me. Amen. I'm thankful that He didn't forsake me. Yeah. Amen. I'm thankful He didn't forsake me. Yeah. I wasn't worthy to be saved. I wasn't worthy for a man to die in my place. But Jesus said the Father told me to do it. Yeah. And in me, you're worthy. Yeah. Aren't you thankful for that today? Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm not deceived. I know there's people that will never have joy in their life sometimes in this church because they can't get over their past. They can't get over what they've done or they get beat up by it, by the, by the one that wants to deceive you. Yeah. See, the one that rescued you is not the one deceiving you. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. And even some of us Feel like weeping at times. Yeah. But Jesus, we should find joy because I'm acceptable before the Father in heaven because of what Jesus did. Not because of what I did. Not because I'm worthy, but because Jesus said, I paid your price for you. Come to me, all ye who are weak and heavy laden, and I shall give you rest. Yeah. It says in the word that he came to heal the brokenhearted and to set the captive free. If that wasn't true, then why would he say something that? Why would he say that I am the bread of life? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Why would he say I am of living water and come and drink of me? Why would he say these things if that was not what he wanted? Right? right? Yeah. How many know it's easy to get distracted from our joy? Yeah. Life is filled with sorrow, isn't it? There's sorrow caused by hurt feelings. Yep. Come on. That's true. There's sorrow caused by being mistreated. Yeah. There's sorrow by family difficulties. Mm -hmm. There's sorrow caused by strained relationships or lack of money or lack of jobs. Yeah. There is sorrow caused by sickness and death. How many know that's real? Yeah. There is also sorrow that creates barriers that make it difficult for us to be joyful in this very day of Easter, Resurrection Day. Yeah. True. Mary stood there weeping, and she was asked by Jesus, just think of that day when Mary was standing and stooping and looking in she saw two angels. And they said, who are you looking for? Paraphrased by Pat. <laughs> who are you looking for? My Savior. My Lord. Jesus. He ain't here. What do you mean he ain't here? He's alive. Yeah. Look. There's his grave clothes. He didn't raise with his grave clothes on. No. They were left behind. Because what bound him to the earth was not going to keep him bound to the earth. That's right. Because who the Son sets free is free indeed. Who the Father set free that day with the power of the Holy Ghost, the resurrection power, it was so powerful that it wasn't just Jesus that raised from the dead. That's right. There were many tombs that had people walk out of. Could you imagine Grandpa Joe that died 40 years ago comes walking in and go, Hey, y'all. Looks for supper. <laughs> I'm hungry. Yeah, I haven't eaten in 40 years. <laughs> Could you imagine? There'd be a lot of people fainted. Oh, I don't think people would even believe it, would they? No, no. they still don't today. Could you imagine the joy and the bewilderment of that day when people that were dead, they knew were dead, were alive because of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ? Woo! How much more joy should we have when Jesus resurrects us out of our death in this world and brings us to life in Him that we can have truth 
and we can have life forevermore knowing that he is our Lord and we are his sheep. The great shepherd will never steer you wrong. He might take that staff and whoop you a little. <laughs> take you behind the woodshed a little. I've never been there. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Sure. <laughs> Nobody believed that. <laughs> it's funny how Mary was weeping and it turned to joy when she saw her Savior standing there. Our weeping should turn into joy. Hebrews 4, 15 through 16 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our own weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are. Yet without sin, let us therefore come boldly to the throne room of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the what? Time of need. It is interesting that Jesus turned her weeping into joy with just one word, Mary. <laughs> Mary. He spoke to her soul. It pierced her soul. Yeah. In John 20, 16, Jesus basically communicated to Mary that she she should not weep because Jesus, her master, was very much alive and standing in front of her. And this morning, the Lord Jesus wants us to not have sorrow, but he wants to turn it to joy because he's standing right in heaven. And the Holy Spirit is right here in this place. And He's living in your heart. And He's saying, Keith. And He's saying, Tom. And He's saying, Jerry. And He's saying, Pat. He's standing right there. He's trying to turn your sorrow from sorrow to joy. He's standing right there in your heart saying, Are you going to listen? Are you going to walk away from that that's taken away your joy in me? Or are you going to sit there and keep accepting what the devil keeps telling you? You keep eating the same dinner, it's going to taste the same all the time. But if you eat with Jesus, you'll never get tired of whatever he gives you. Amen. You can ask my wife. She can put anything in front of me and I'll eat it. Just give me some salt. Ketchup and pepper. I'm good to go. I can put anything down with salt, ketchup, and pepper. That's how I made it through my childhood. And she knows that's true. I even eat my eggs with ketchup on them. And a little tapatio here and there, of course. Some kimchi here and there. But God doesn't care about your problem. He cares about where you run when you're in trouble. Amen. Amen. He don't care how far you went. He just cares where you run to when you're when you find yourself in that position. So this morning I say to you, in order for us to be born again, we must relinquish our rights to the Father in heaven through his son Jesus Christ to our lives. Yep. Don't you think? Yes. Amen. The announcement the angels gave the woman at the tomb. We know that she was saddened because she thought they got to be joking. Well, they're clothed in white. You've never seen something so bright. And then yet, you still question what they say. But when you hear the master call, the shepherd's call, mm -hmm. Mary. Come on. It changed everything, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 22, it says... But now Christ has risen from the dead, and he has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Amen. Why is the resurrection our source of joy? Because it's a signal and significant moment. That that day, Friday was a bad day, but we call it Good Friday. Because we knew that Friday had to happen before Sunday can come. That's right. Amen? <laughs> Friday had to happen so Sunday could come. Yeah. So resurrection 
And Christ is trying to resurrect us out of our muck and our mire and our problems and our situations. And he's trying to say, I still am that resurrection power. And I still want to resurrect you from what you think you're in right now. I want to take you from where you are and I want to put you back in my graces. Yep. Back in my presence. And I want to make sure you know that you're loved. And it's okay. Yep. Daddy's got this. Yep. Come on, think yep. about this. If it wasn't so, God would never have sent His Son. He's got our backs. John 11, 25-27 said, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in Me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in Me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to Him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into this world. Amen. I'm the resurrection and life. Woo! Think about it. Yeah. That's Jesus speaking. Yeah. Bye, bye. Romans 8, 20, or 34 through 39 says, He who is... Con or, who he... Who... Blah, blah, blah. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore, is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulations or disaster or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written. For your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. He didn't say that we can't separate ourselves from Him. He said that it can't separate the love of God and the love of Jesus from us. Even when we're dirty and nasty, He will still love us. He may not like us, but He will still love us and He still will be faithful to His Word and He will still forgive and He will still change your life and He will still elevate you from the garbage to the from the garbage heap to the mountain top. Amen. Come on. Amen. We're redeemed, aren't we? Yeah. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 says, And you have made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you all once walked according to the curse of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who now works in the son of disobedient among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind Woo. and the mind Aren't we supposed to be renewing our mind through the power of God? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we are by nature children of wrath just as the others. Yeah. Call them out. You're no different. We all live that way. Yeah. Christians should not be judgmental. They should be loving as Christ is to us. When they judge, they are judged by that manner. Who do they think they are? What justifies them? Yeah. Whose are they? Wow. Take it up with the Father. Don't take it up with me. Come on. You got real quiet in here. You know why? Because it hurts. The Word says that it's offensive to us. So why should we be surprised when it offends us? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Duh. I got offended, Lord. Well, maybe you need to get on your knees. <laughs> get unoffended. That's right. 
get glad in the same pants you got mad in. <laughs> right? That's what my mom said. If not, I'll help you that way. <laughs> my mama used to tell me that. First Peter 1, 1, or 1, 18, uh, 1, 18 through 20 says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold. How can soul, gold and silver be corruptible? It's hard to believe that. From your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. Ooh, here we go. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you. It was not a ransom of silver and gold that was paid for our sins. It was the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That paid for our sins. Amen? Amen. The sinless Son of God was shed, the blood was shed for you and me. Amen. There's a fountain in heaven still to this day that flows His blood. God does not forget the blood. The blood is still seen. Yeah. We're written in the Lamb's book of life. Oh, Amen. come on, think about that. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God who was and is and is to come. They scream that in heaven because they know that He is holy and that He is just and His word does not come back void. Nope. Yeah. Thank God. 1 John 3, 3 says, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Right. John 3, 5 through 8 says, Jesus answered, most surely I said, I'm going to read the whole thing. Said to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it is coming from and where it goes. So in everyone who is born of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Yes. We shouldn't let our joy be stealing, stolen, weep over things that we can't change. All we need to do is find joy that Jesus changed it all. Amen. Jesus paid it all. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a... New creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. And he has given us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Not imputing their trespasses to them. And has committed to us the word of God reconciliation Jesus is the word for reconciliation in him we are right with God again in him we don't have to pay a debt that we owe in him we will get a reward in heaven with him in him we find forgiveness of our trespasses. Woo! Amen. Anybody getting what I'm putting down today? Yeah. You want me to shut up, I'm sure. No. Although there are times in our life that depression that comes to us and frustration and situations that put us in situations and, and a mindset that we can't get over, let me tell you one thing. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is your outlet. Jesus is your safe haven. It says that I'm in the shadow of the Most High God and that I am worthy of God's grace and worthy of God's shadow in my life because Jesus Christ died on that cross for me and that He made me a new creation. Not just a new creation, but I'm a new person in Him because my identity no longer is in Patrick Scott Atchison, but it's in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior forevermore. My my name is a brand that my mom and dad put on me, but the Christ Jesus that is in this world and in our lives 
That's the brand that I'll carry forevermore. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus is the resurrection power that changes everything in the holy of holies of heaven itself. See, I'm a little unorthodox with what I'm preaching today, but I'm telling you, it's the Word of God that makes a difference in our lives. If God says that I'm in the shadow of the Almighty, then I am in the shadow of Almighty God, and nobody can change that but me. Because when God put a brand on me and He said that you're my child, you serve me through my Son, Jesus Christ, you no longer have to live the consequences of what you did in the past because I am your future. Yes, yes we have to pay the price for some of the things we do. But I don't have to let that be my identity because I no longer identify of this world, but I identify in God the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Spirit of the Most High God lives in my life and has changed me forevermore. And I don't have to worry Amen. about these things. How many feel the presence of the Lord? Amen. Think about it. The shadow of the Almighty God yeah. is upon us. And the power of Jesus Christ, that resurrection power, changes us forevermore, makes a new creature in us, changes us. We are no more. We are transformed. Amen, right? Transformed. Amen. It does not mean that we are the same thing that we were. We no longer align to my old life. How many of you know getting over your old life is hard? But when you have Jesus, you'll make it through that. That's right. Amen. Jerry wasn't easy giving up alcohol, but God convicted you, didn't He? And you did it. Through the power of who? Jesus Christ that lives in you. And the power of the Holy Ghost changes us. That doesn't mean we're not human. It means we need a lot of grace. And with Jesus, grace never ends. Come on, think about that. Grace never ends. We have to humble ourselves and live in repentance every day. We must repent of what we've done. And whatever we've done, we must live in the heart of repentance because that is the key right there. If you live in the heart of repentance and say, not my will, God, but yours be done. And that it's not about me. Father, I yield my life to you. I change what I am in you. Regenerate me. Make me a new creature. Yeah. Paul said I have to die to myself daily. Not because he was on an ego trip. It's because he wanted his ego to stay in check. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Because he didn't want people to see Paul the uh, uh, accuser. Paul the accursed. Paul the killer. He wanted them to see what the creature he became in the regeneration and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That day on the day of he was on the road to Damascus, it changed his course of his life forevermore. Yes. He saw Jesus himself, but Jesus had already been in heaven. People think that Paul was one of them that walked around with Jesus. But he wasn't. Paul was called to preach to you people like me. The Gentiles. So that you would know it wasn't just for them, but in Christ all the branches are joined to the vine. Yes. Hallelujah for that. We are one in God. There is no two identities in Christ. There is only one identity. And that's in Him crucified. I exist and I live. And I have a life abundantly. Not just abundantly, but I also have joy. Not just because of joy, but I also have an eternal home that I don't have to worry about a roof over my head no more. Because I'm going to heaven and ain't nobody going to keep me from riding that Holy Ghost train all the way to heaven. Yep. Amen. Let me tell you, when those skies part and the horn blows, I'm telling you right now, I want to be one of those going. Yes. God wants repentance. So resurrection power can live in us yes. every day. Yes. He wants us to know the key 
to eternal life is eternal servitude to him. Amen. And to say, not my will, Father, but yours be done in my life. Yeah. And that God can be God yeah. in us. Yeah. And that Jesus can be seen. Colton Dixon sang a song, let them see you in me. You would never think a guy like that would say that. He's got big old punk spike hair and all kinds of things. He looks like a rocker. But he sings one of the prettiest songs. Let them see you in me. Let them see you in me. See, that should be our call. Is let them see him in us. We should not be identified by John. The postman. Yeah. Or Pastor Pat. We should be seen as a child of the most high God. Amen. Saved by grace. Filled with the Holy Ghost. And has joy forevermore. I'm challenging you today. Don't walk out these doors. If you don't know Jesus like you think you should. Amen. We're going to say the sinner's prayer. Again. We're just going to make it right. How many know there's nothing wrong with just making it right? There's nothing wrong with making it right. You have nothing to lose if you ask Jesus Christ into your life. But you have everything to lose if you don't. See that God's plan of salvation was never meant to lead us astray. It was meant to bring us into the shadow of the Almighty and to have His hand on us and to have His Holy Spirit working in us and through us and that His Son lives in us. Hallelujah for that. Bow your heads and say this with me. Dear Jesus, I'm sorry. Forgive me for my wicked ways. Forgive me for not calling on you sooner. Jesus, clean my life up. I hand it to you. This isn't about me, but it's about you saying that you will take care of it. I accept you as my Lord and Savior from this day forward. You are my King. You are my God. And I love you. Amen. It don't take much. It don't take much to stay right with God. I urge you today to celebrate with joy and let the resurrection power be your joy every day in Jesus. Amen? Amen. May God bless you real good. Have a wonderful day. If you want me to pray with you, I'm up here. I'll pray with you. God bless you. I love you.